Alright, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to recover a lost WAV file from a Behringer audio recording device when you get the zero bytes WAV file, even if you ejected the USB device properly. Okay, now one of the first things you want to do before attempting this is to go ahead and create a backup or image of the drive. That way if something happens you've kind of got a fallback plan here. So I'm on my Mac right now and you can see the Lexar drive here. So I'm simply going to go to Disk Utility and I'm going to choose the Lexar drive here and I'm going to say New Image and let's call it Lexar. In this case since I've already done this I'm just going to make it Lexar-1.dmg and I'm going to hit save. And it's going to take a few minutes and go ahead and create a uh, DMG image file of the drive. That's everything on the drive. That way if something happens then at least I've got a complete image of it that I can still use to try to attempt to recover these files. So if we take a look at this Lexar USB drive here you'll notice that we've got uh, a lot of wave or several wave files here and most of these wave files are going to be in the several hundred meg uh, to even uh, gigabyte size but if we take a look here notice that we've got uh, three of them that are listed as zero bytes and so these are going to be the corrupted files that we want to try to recover now I'm on a Mac right at the moment but the best way to actually recover these files is going to be through a Windows machine. So let's switch over to Windows and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so over on my Windows box, the first thing I want to be able to do is show hidden files and folders. So I'm going to go to the control panel. And in the upper right corner, I'm going to type in folder options. And we're going to go to the View tab, and we're going to say Show Hidden Files and Folders, uh, Don't Hide the Extensions, and Don't Hide Protected Operating System Files. You're going to get a warning. We're going to say Yes. We're going to hit Apply and OK. The reason is, once we recover these files using the Check Disk command, they're going to be a hidden system type file that Windows won't automatically show you. So we want to make sure that we can see those. The next thing we want to do is go to the command line. So I'm going to hit the start button and just type in CMD. And we're going to use the check disk command. Now the syntax here is very important. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit the start button here. And I'm going to check the drive letter. So in my case, this Lexar drive is drive letter J. So I'm going to type in my check disk command, remembering drive letter J. So we're going to type in C H K D S K J colon space slash F. And we're going to hit enter. And it's going to go through and should verify files and folders. And notice here that it said it's already checked the file system and found no problems. That's because I've already run it on this drive. But normally it would tell you that it found X number of files with issues and has recovered those. So I'm going to close out a command prompt. I'm going to go to start, go to computer. And I'm going to go into this Lexar drive. And notice right here these uh, particular files and let's check our date created. So I'm going to right click my column headers here and I'm going to check off the date created. We're going to take a look and the file that I'm really concerned about is this one right here. It was created on 12-22 of 2014. All right, so what I have to do is I have to go find this one. Now, because I'm showing hidden files and folders, notice I see these hidden folders here. Now, these two are from my Mac, but these right here are going to be the ones that I'm concerned with. And again, I'm going to right click and show date created. And it shows these as around September the 5th. And so those aren't the ones that I want. So I'm going to go into this found.001. And again, I'm going to right click my columns, show date created. 
and lo and behold here's this file right here now it shows a date created of 1226 but I'm willing to bet that this is the file I want and it's about half a gig in size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually copy this file and I'm going to paste it out here on my desktop and then what I want to do is right click it and I'm going to rename it and in, we're going to take the CHK file extension off of it and we're going to rename this as a wave so we're going to put .wav now if you try to play this through Windows Media Player or whatever it may or may not play the best way to do this is to download the VLC Media Player because it will play it and it will do the conversion for us so let's go to the internet and we're going to go to videoland.org and we're going to download the VLC player for Windows and let's go and install it if you're not familiar with the VLC player it is a wonderful piece of software that is available on Mac Windows and Linux and it will play pretty much any multimedia file that you can imagine. As a matter of fact, the rule is the VLC won't play it. You don't need to be listening or watching it anyway. So we're going to run the VLC media player. And the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and open the file. And so we're going to open this WAV file that we created. And at this point, you should be hearing correct audio. Now, our problem is that, again, if we try to play this WAV file on another media player or deal with it, we will probably get an error. So what we're going to want to do is in VLC Media Player, we're going to want to use the Convert or Save option. So in Windows, I click Media, Convert, and Save. And it's basically the same on a Mac. And what we're going to do is drag the WAV file in here. And we're going to tell it to convert or save right here. And we're going to convert it over to, I'm just going to convert it to an MP3 because this is spoken audio, so MP3 is going to be just fine. And we want to figure out where we're going to put it, so we're going to tell it to put the destination out here on the desktop. And we're going to go ahead and give it a file name. Now, Clearview has told me that this was on the 21st of December. So I'm going to give it a file name here and save as type mp3 and we're going to hit save and we're going to hit start. And we're going to give it just a few minutes and as you can see it's taking that WAV file and converting it to an mp3. Once we have this mp3 it'll be playable on pretty much any device and editable in pretty much any software now because we're actually creating an entirely new file. And that is how you recover a corrupted audio file from a Behringer recorder that has given you a zero byte file limitation. And I also want to make sure that I get a, give a hat tip out to the taperssection.com forum post where I actually got the method to recover this file because without this, this would have been a real challenge.